Good morning, friends. Today I wanted to play a little bit with uh, these little pansies. So I'm going to draw them. Let me just flip my pad around so that spiral isn't in my way. Of course, today I'm using those wonderful Artisto pads I tell you about all the time. Um, they're really reasonable, great texture, great quality. And I love that they're in this spiral. So you can keep them, you can fill a book, date it, and you can always refer back and look to past years or months and see how much you've grown. And they also have that perforation. So you can tear off that, uh, your masterpiece if you care to do so. So thanks for being here with me. Um, of course, I'm Debbie. And uh, let's just practice sketching a few of these little cute little pansies and I'm actually going to sketch three of them. My pencil is a little dull so we'll see how this does. I'm using my black wing um, pencil and I love it because it has the e little replaceable eraser because what I end up having is a bunch of E, uh, pencils with no erasers. So I really like these and the erasers really thin. So I'll link that in the bottom for you. What I have found about pansies, I do have little pansies, is let's just start with the middle because we want to make sure all our beautiful little petals are pointed towards the middle. So I'm going to do a pansy here, rule of odds. I'm going to um, place three of them. I'm going to do a little pansy here and a little pansy here. So we've kind of got this S shape as far as composition, which I always love. And then we'll add some fun little leaves and greenery around it. All right, with a pansy, how I start is, it's almost like an upside down heart. So it's going to come out like this and something like that. Then I'm going to come up and I'm going to fill in two more of those. And I like to ruffle my edges, just like that. Almost looks like a butterfly as well, doesn't it? Now I've seen it both ways. I've seen people paint or draw them with one large flower in the back, which I kind of like. Um, you can also do two, but I think today what I'm going to do is just draw that one large one. And they are quite, quite large and round. So there we go. I might just make these a little bit more round at the edges like that. I think I like that better. And whenever I'm drawing different flowers. What I'm trying to do is really just capture that familiar shape or what we identify that particular flower with. And for me, it's these three beautiful petals. It's the darkness in the center. And the, the ones I typically see are purple or that magenta. So let's do another one. So we start with kind of that heart shape like this. And then the two on the outside. So it's almost like a little butterfly there. Then we're gonna do this round one, which to me almost looks like it's holding, embracing these beautiful little petals on the bottom. Let's do one more here. I think I will, I don't want them all facing upwards. I'm going to face this one a little bit to the left. So starting with that heart-shaped petal. And I love this eraser because it's really little. It can fit in. And then our two side ones and that big one in the back. Okay, I tried to vary those a little bit. And then what we're gonna do when these are done is we'll add some greenery, maybe coming out like this. We'll see what we do. Let's go ahead. We're gonna be working a lot with wet in wet. And I think I'm going to be using 
these beautiful purples and this kind of pinky purple quin with quin magenta in it. I used purple and I just mixed that in there. And these are, uh, this is the quinacridone violet with Windsor Newton. And then of course I'll use my sap green and olive greens. Okay, let me see if I can fit that in. I will try and show you the consistencies I'm painting with. I always go for that T consistency. What I'm gonna do first is wet that bottom area. Um, yeah, let's do that. So washing and rinsing my brush, I just tap it off on the side and maybe a little bit on my paper towel. And let's go in and wet this area first. Uh, you know what, I always start on the bottom. Let's start on the top. I'm just going in with clear water using the tip of my brush. By the way, I'm using my Degato. You can use your Princeton number eight or six. This is a Degato, um, a great little starter set I've been real happy with. And we just wanna make it shiny, no puddles. I'm then going to tap my brush into this purple, and I don't want too terribly much. And let's just tap in on the outer edges. Look at that beautiful blending it's already doing. There we go. And I'll move to my next Petal over here, again, no petals, petals. Just a nice sheen and tap again into that purple. If you need to tap off your brush on your paper towel or something, go ahead. And we're just gonna let that spread. Now the bottom one, I wanna be careful. I don't want to touch these two on the side because otherwise they're just gonna all spread together. And really right now I'm working a lot with the little tips here. Pick up a little bit of that purple paint. If you're not sure if you have too much, just tap it off on your paper towel and go in. So isn't that already looking like a beautiful pansy? Now I'm gonna to move to the next flower because I wanna let that dry a tiny bit. And then I'll go in with some other colors. We could maybe right now go in and just with a damp brush, no color. Just draw some little lines. Look at how beautiful that is. So it kind of spread it a little. Now let's let that dry just a bit so it's damp and we'll move on to our other uh, flowers here. So loading my brush with water and then tapping off and just using the side of my brush. But the main thing, making sure now you just have this beautiful shine, this beautiful sheen, no petals. And I'm going to use a little bit different purple. So this is a little deeper purple. You may not even really notice it. Which one did I paint? I think I painted this one or wet this one. And tapping in. There we go, look how beautiful. Watercolors, you guys, I swear it paints itself. Now wash and rinse my brush and go in again. Now I've got this drip happening here, so I'm just gonna tap that off. Create that nice, shiny base. Go into my purple. Tap around the outer edge, there you go. Okay, let's do our last one here. Rinsing my brush. 
creating that wet on wet. And going into my purple. And just tapping in again. So basically, this is painting itself, truly. Now what I wanna do while this is a little damp here, and actually before we move on from here, just wash, rinse your brush, tap it off, and let's do the same thing we did here, which is just kind of creating these lines outward so it just gives a hint of some of those lines. And then what I'm gonna do here while this is still damp is go into my more magenta looking purple, tap off, and let's just go in a little bit here. There we go. And maybe here. like that. Just using the tip of my brush and I'm gonna let that sit. Okay, we can do that on this one too. So pick up a tiny bit of that Quinn magenta mixed with a little bit of purple and just outline a bit. So because that's still wet, I'm getting some blend there, which I love. You can go in and add in, just pulling that paint down using the tip of my brush. Look how pretty that is. I'll do that here too. Just the lightest pressure with our brush. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I think we can go into this top part now. This is pretty dry. So wet on wet, I'm just dampening my brush, patting it off so I don't have too much water. Make sure not to touch these two because they're wet and you don't want everything to blend together in a big mess. You can just leave a tiny bit of white space between the two. And then that one, I want to go in with that purple, just like we did the others. Touch in. And there we go. Look how pretty that is. Wait till you see it with the yellow in there. You know how yellow has that beautiful, it's that contrasting color to purple. It's like it's opposite. I'm gonna make sure this back leaf is really a little bit larger. And there we go. Okay, I really like that. I might tap in with a tiny bit of blue. Let's pick up um, this beautiful sky blue from the My Lang palette. You could also use Cerulean from your Winsor Newton and tap off. And let's just add in some touches of that here. And again, that beauty of watercolor, you can just let it mix and do its own thing. Look how pretty that is, that mix. Oh, I love that. All right. I'm already really happy with these. We're gonna go in and do this big petal in the back. So I'm applying that thin layer of wetness. There we go. And use our purple to go in and touch. 
And this Artisto paper just does such a beautiful job of um, blending and I love the way it reacts with water. Now, while that's a little wet, I'll go into that cerulean or with the My Lang palette, it's that sky blue with just a little bit, tab off. And let's just touch in there because I'm really liking this color that's producing. So, so pretty. There we go. Just touching in while that's wet. Yeah, I really like that. Now I might go ahead and pull that down. I'm just using a damp brush to lift a little bit of that. So I wash and tap off my brush so it's barely damp and just using the tip going up like that. Look how pretty, oh, I love this. So, so fun. Okay. We'll come back to this and add that yellow in the middle in just a bit, but let's go ahead and move on to this one. So wetting the back, kind of using the side of my brush. There we go. And again, go into any of your purples you really want is just fine. I'm gonna use that purple this time, which is my favorite, my uh, uh, Windsor Newton. And then I might just tap in with a darker purple. So I'll pick up my dark purple, Let's see what that is, yeah. And tap in with that, that's a little bit of a dark value for me, so I'm adding a tiny bit more water. And then tap off to get rid of that excess, or you can tap off on your paper towel. And let's put some of that in there. So beautiful. even draw it down a little. Ooh, ooh, so pretty. This is gonna be beautiful when we add in that green because purple and green are complementary. Now we might go back up again, something like that, just pulling upwards into there. Wait till we get that yellow in there. And then let's do this one because it's on the bottom. Or we can actually do this one, but we wanna make the sides but we wanna make sure we're not touching that petal while it's wet. So lay down that wet coat and go into, I'm gonna go into my regular purple this time. Touch in, there we go. And wash and blot off my brush and do something like that. We could even go into the Quinn Magenta and add some little touches while it's wet so we get that beautiful blend of those purples. And let's move over to this petal now. So wash my brush so I have clear water on there. all the way to the edges and go into our beautiful purple. Let it blend all on its own. Sometimes I swear to you, watercolors just paint themselves. And we'll 
with a dry, clean, damp brush. I'm just pulling a little. I'll go in with my purple. Add in a few little dots here and there. There we go. Ah, so pretty. All right, let's finish off our bottom petal here, making sure not to touch these two. And go in. I think I'm gonna make that one more of a purple. There we go. Maybe add a little bit of blue to that, so. Because I love, and purple has blue in it, so it, they go really well together. And just tap in. Look at that color combination. Isn't that gorgeous? Now this may be a little dry, so we're not gonna get that blend quite as much, but look how pretty. Okay, let's go back in now and create that beautiful little center. I will go over with a light wash of water here. Got a little bit of puddling there, so I want to pick that up. And a very, very, be very careful here. This yellow is potent, so we want a very light value just meaning it has a lot of water not a lot of water on your brush but it's diluted and i want to go in and add that pretty yellow color in okay we're going to do that on all of these but making sure they're dry let's go in here too with that dry brush So I've got that damp brush and I'm just picking up some of that color. Oh, so pretty. Okay, I wanna go into these areas now with that deep, dark, dark purple. It's almost, gosh, what is that color? Let's see if we can create it here. Let me pick up my purple. And I think what I will add to that actually is, let's think here. Let's try like an ultramarine blue. We really wanna get it dark. And I hesitate to put like a Payne's Gray in there because that might mute it a little and I don't want it muted. So I just went in with ultramarine blue and I'm using quite a thick, um, thick uh, consistency. And let's go in and create that little, wet on dry, There we go. Don't want to do this one yet because that's still wet, but we can go in and I'm just using the tip of my brush. I've got my brush straight up and down, so I'm only getting the tip of my brush on the paper. Look at that. Ooh, so pretty. I don't think I'll go into these yet because they might be a little bit damp still. So wash and rinse my brush, tap off, and let's get that yellow in here. Okay. Oop, see now I have a little too much paint. So it started to puddle there. And there we go, we've got that pretty yellow coming out. Now once that dries, we'll go back in with these dark pieces. And then I wanna go in and darken up these edges. 
This one, I'm not sure. I feel like I want to let that dry a little. Let's right now go into these little ruffly edges. I'm going to wash and rinse my brush. Go into this beautiful dark purple we created. Might even add in some of that Quinn magenta. So I've got a dark value, like I said, which means more pigment than water. Tap off and let's outline this a tiny bit just with the tip of my brush. I'm going around dotting in that edge. Now I'm gonna wash and rinse my brush and make sure it is only damp. Now this is where you have to practice this technique. You're holding your brush horizontal and you're just barely tapping into the edge of that line we just created. And you're pushing and pulling it down. And the trick is you don't wanna tap into that entire painted edge. You're just tapping in to the very edge, feathering it out and working downwards, okay? Look how pretty that is. Let's do that with this edge as well. So I pick up my dark purple value, dot in all around the top, and then wash and rinse your brush very well. And you just want it damp. You don't want it too wet. And we're doing that push, that pull, but making sure we're just tapping into that edge and pulling it down. Look how pretty that is. Love that. Oh, these are so pretty. Okay. I think the other thing I'm going to do is, let's see if this, yeah, this is pretty dry. Let's go in and put in that dark purple which we mixed with some of that purple. And then I added in ultramarine blue. Is that the ultramarine blue? No. Nope. Yeah. Got a really dark, cool, it's on the cool side. And tap off. And let's go in and add these. Oop, now see, I've got little petals. So all I wanna do is tap off. Just using the tip of my brush. There we go. So, so pretty. And I think this is probably dry, so we can go in there as well. and do the same thing. Oh, love that. And then how about we go in the top here with this line of purple. Just like that. I think what I'll do is add in a little bit of that Quinn in there. There we go. And now wash and rinse my brush. Tap it off so it's damp. Hold your brush horizontal because you're just barely tapping in. And feathering out, pulling that edge downwards. Oh, so, so beautiful. Okay, let's see if we can go into this now. It's pretty dry and you can usually feel because it won't be cool. And lay down a very thin layer of wetness. Don't go over it too much because you'll pick up that paint. And then go into our yellow. And there we go. Ah, oh, so pretty. This should be Oh, see, that's very cool. So I can't go into that quite yet. So I'm just going to leave that. Let's go ahead and go in and uh, paint a few of our stems here for you. 
Uh, let me find my little... Doo -doo -doo -doo. I took a picture of some pansies. Okay. And this, again, is one of those times when I really don't like the little <laughs> raggedy pansy leaves. So I'm going to kind of do a version of my own. Can play with the sap green and olive green. And let's go in and Create a stem coming out here, maybe following there, just like that. So we've got this beautiful S shape. Now we'll start painting in some of those leaves. Point, press, and you can add in those raggedy edges. They're not my thing, but that's okay. Point, press. And then add in those raggedy edges. I'm going to use a little different color. Point press. And let's get those raggedy edges. There we go. Let's do one right here. Point press. Point press and create those raggedy edges. There we go. Let's do a few more. I'm gonna lighten my value, which just means I'm adding more water. Have one come out here. Something like that, maybe have one peeking out. So playing with those values so you get light and dark values. Point press and then add in the little raggedy edges. Okay. I even like to add in, create a green and add in a little bit of that purple to it. I just think it makes for such a beautiful little contrast. So I'm gonna do one of those leaf petals, leaves here. Point, press, widening out my brush. And there we go. Make these little raggedy leaves. Go back to my green, my sap green. Add in, let's do one coming out. Well, let's do one. I want to make one coming out here. Point and our little raggedy edges. Let's color in some green here. Maybe even have one coming out like that. So I'm just trying to draw our line down. Point, press. Do those little raggedy edges. Oop, I got a little fuzz there. Something like that. So I'm varying color values. I'm varying um, my values. Point press. And then the little raggedy edges. Maybe creating one in the background here. There we go. Okay, I think that's really pretty. 
Now, what do I want to do? I want to, maybe we want to make one that kind of looks like a bud opening in the background there. So I'm going to use a very light value of that purple. And let's just create maybe a little pansy that's on its side there. Wash and rinse my brush, go in with my green. There we go. I think that's kind of pretty. We could maybe make one coming out right here. So go into a very light value of the purple. Lots of water. Tap off my brush. Let's make another one come out right here. Kind of like it's on its side. It's maybe getting ready to open. Tap in a little bit there too. And wash and rinse my brush. Go in with that green. Tap in while it's wet. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. Okay. Let's draw in that bright yellow center. So grab some of your lemon yellow and your cad yellow and make a pretty thick consistency, almost like cream or milk. And we're gonna go in and draw that little center. Everything should be dry now, like that. Oh, that is so pretty, guys. And I think we're about done now. Yeah, that's really, really lovely, I think. And I, oops, dripped a little water there. I love, I used, remember those values. I used light and darks, and you could even go back into these and darken up some things. But I'm quite liking just how it is right now. I think I might do one more dark petal here. So let's grab our sap green. and create maybe one petal coming out here so it draws my eye down here. Point press, add in those little ruffly things. There, yeah, I think that's quite nice. I'm gonna create just a little bit more of a sap greeny, maybe some olive green, and come out here. Point press and add in. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Maybe go in with a different value here. And just create some little things like that. Oh, so pretty. And there you go. I think I will just leave this like this. We could always go in and um, add in that dark purple there because that's quite dry. So let me grab my blue and my purple. Darken that up a bit. Make sure you don't touch into that yellow we just put in there. And there you go, guys. I think this is just beautiful. If you want a detail, you could add in a few of those. Woo! Okay, that is a sign I need to stop. So I'm going to stop right here. All right, have fun painting this, and um, I'm excited for you to give this a try. I'll list all of my supplies in the bottom, and happy painting, everybody. Bye. Hi, friends. Today, we are painting these fun little pansies. Thank you to uh, all of you for 
always requesting and I'm really having fun with your requests. So I wanted to start out by saying we are going to be using um, this wonderful little brush that we have all been introduced to. I've had this in my enormous collection of brushes and just kind of forgot about it. What I'm loving about it is it produces these beautiful little leaves, these beautiful petals so effortlessly, so easily. Um, I mean, it, it basically makes these shapes on its own. And then the other thing I'm loving is if I turn it on its side, I can get these thin lines. I created this entire painting with this brush. Um, so these thin little delicate lines, these leaves are one brush stroke. These are pretty much one brush stroke that I kind of wiggle around and make fatter or wider. And then I can go in with the tips and also create these little dots. So really loving this brush. I will link it for you again. It's, uh, I'm hearing a lot of you refer to it as a few different things. I always called it a cattail um, and a cat tongue. It's also referred to as an oval wash. If you watched my tutorial on this brush, it can give you a beautiful thick stroke wash, which I love. So let's start out first by creating, um, we'll get to this in a second. I always like to sketch out and kind of plan a little bit of my composition, but let's just create the color palette first for you. So I will grab one of my little pieces here that I've cut up and create a swatch for you. If you are buying my kits, I hope they're helping you. I give you the little swatch and I give you my drawing and then I give you my, my final painting. I talk about this all the time, but I used to go up after class and watch my professor up close. And I would look at her painting, try and memorize what I saw and notice so I could go home and recreate it. So I, I priced them for $25, they're on Etsy. I do one kit, one pre-work. You have all my little handwritten notes and drawings and everything I do to prepare. And hopefully you get it, can bring it home, open it up and go back to the video and create this for yourself. So let's make our purple lavender color. I like to create my own purple. This is the violet purple, which is absolutely beautiful. Now I'm using my round brush right now, but we're going to be using this uh, oval wash cat tongue for the actual flowers. So and this is that beautiful violet purple that Winsor Newton has. What I'm going to do is add some of my ultramarine blue to it because I want to create my own version of purple that I want. Now that has a lot more, more blue in it, so it's more of a blue purple, blue violet, which is fine. I'm gonna add in just a little bit more purple to that. I like creating my own hues a lot of times because you know it's something that you can't get necessarily right out of the tube and I like that. So there's the purple that we're going to use. And what I did, I will put the two colors on this swatch for you. I took my violet purple Let's just bring that into the top here. That is the violet purple. And then I grabbed some of my ultramarine blue, which be careful, it can be a little strong. And I created this beautiful purple, I think. I love it. It's got a little bit more of a bluish tint to it. So I really like that. I will write that on this swatch for the kit. The green we will be using 
And by the way, I'm going to be painting today on uh, my arches, a 140 pound, 300 GSM cold press. And, um, you know, I just, I like that, that paint. That, I'm sorry, that paper. So I'm also combining my sap and my uh, olive green because I just love that color. So we'll be using this for the leaves and stems. Now what I will do, I don't remember if I've shared this with you, but what I love to do to get those darker hues, you see me a lot of times use this gold green, which is great. But a lot of times, talking about blending colors to create some beautiful um, unity with the greens and the colors of your flowers, to get the darker shades of green, what I do is just add in some of that purple to my green, which is what I did here. So this is the green right here that I'm using. Then what I did is I went in and I grabbed a little bit of that purple and I mixed it in here. So it gives me this beautiful darker green that is great for some darker leaves and it has that beautiful purple undertone so it unites and kind of is very coherent with the other flowers. So that's kind of just something I've always done is to darken some of the leaves, I add in the flower color. It, I have yellow flowers too, so I could even use a green with some of that yellow in it for some of the other flowers. Let's try that. So here's our green. Now let me grab a little bit of that cad yellow, my favorite, and create, oop, create, I'm gonna do it on this palette here, guys. And let me add some of that green. And that will give us a beautiful light green that I could also use in here. So I've got my light green, I've got my darker green, and then for, for leaves, and then for the other flower, I'm using all cad yellow. By the way, these are complementary colors, meaning they're opposite on the color wheel, so they're very contrasting. That could be a little bit, you know, some everybody's different. When you use contrasting colors, it's definitely has an intensity. It, our eye kind of fights for where we want to go, but because, so they're opposite. They're complete opposites of the color wheel. So contrasting colors, they create this pop. What I like to do if I use contrasting colors in my florals is I will add in, in the middle of the two of them, is this beautiful green and blue green. So I will go in and add that and it kind of brings again a unity to these. So you've got your opposites on the color wheel. You bring in these beautiful greens, which is in the middle of them on the color wheel. And it brings this beautiful cohesiveness and this beautiful harmony between them. So it's not so contrasting. Okay. So just another little tip I'm thinking of while we're here. Those are basically the colors that I will be using. And you know what, you might even look here. So you've got this purple and yellow really opposite, but now when you bring in this green, it kind of creates this togetherness, right? Okay, so before we start, I wanted to share with you this little drawing I did. I made the center of our flower here. Let me grab my pen. And then what I did is I found, so I created a circle. Let me draw that circle in for you. Like so. 
My circles are always kind of wonky. In the middle, I put the center of my flower. I'm doing all of these pansies head on. And then right here, I come out from the center and I create this first petal, which I noticed is kind of broad at the bottom with these poppies. I'm sorry, with these uh, pansies. So coming out. Now remember when we go to create the edge of our flower, we don't want just a perfect little edge. We wanna make it kind of ruffly and fun and interesting like this. Okay, and then we come out on the side. Same thing, we make it fun and interesting. Same thing, fun and interesting like that. Now what I saw with this top petal is it kind of looked like this fan and encompassed these flowers. So I came from the side of this petal came out like so, okay? I hope that kind of makes sense for you. I can actually draw another one right here. Here's the center. Here's our circle. My circle's not perfect. We come out and create this ruffle like this, another one on the side, another one, okay? And then on the top, this top one looked like some mountains almost at the top, or like a fan. So I started from right here versus pointing to the center. And I did this, and then came out here, I kind of almost felt like it held the other lead, the other petals. Okay, and then the, the uh, composition design I'm using is going to be somewhat like an S or a little bit of even a C. So let's get started. Again, I'm using my 100 pound, um, actually I said arches, this is Stonehenge. I may not buy this again, it's a little pricey. It's a great 100% rag cotton paper. This was gifted to me by my daughters because I told them I probably wouldn't buy it for myself. It was a little pricey, so they gifted me um, a pad for my Christmas present. Um, but let's play with that and see how it works. So creating my focal point right here, and then I'm gonna have another one probably down here and up here. So we've got, by the time we add in leaves, we'll have all of this S shape. All right, so pull out your cat's tongue and we're going to rinse it off. One of the things I found with this cat tongue, which is taking me a little bit to get used to, this brush holds a ton of water and paint. So it takes a lot more than my standard eight round Princeton to rinse it and to get all that paint out. Um, not a bad thing, it's just something I noticed. So let's go in and create our first petal down here. I'm going to put the purple in the middle. So let me go into that beautiful purple blue that I created. And we wanna start with a light value. Okay, so kind of watery, we can always darken. So let's just point to the center, fine line, then push down. And you can even just twist your brush or come from the other side, like so. Okay, like that. So there's our first little petal. Let's go in and create the second one on this side. Point, come around like that. I noticed the side ones just, I you know, not that that's how they always are, but they seem to be a little smaller. Point, it's always a challenge for me to keep my hand out of the way for you all, like this. Now, what I would like to do before this dries too much, and this is one of the things I love about this paintbrush, 
is to use the tip and go in and just dab in to the edges here. Isn't that pretty? Because I want to get that beautiful spread that is so noticeable in these flowers. Okay, so this was a little drier here. So what I might do, if you haven't watched my push and pull video, I'm going to rinse my brush, dab it off so it's just damp, and go in and just encourage that line to spread a little, okay? Just like that. So that kind of allowed it to spread. Now I might even go back in and add a little bit more of that purple because I wanna see that at the edges, like so, okay? So, so pretty. Love it, all right? And you don't have to have every area exactly the same, like add dark here and maybe not the other side, like kind of play with it like that. Okay, so let's get ready for the top petal, which almost looked to me like it could be one petal, but I noticed it's actually kind of two, but it kind of comes and like holds these, frames these um, other three petals. It almost looks like a mountain. And I give you these references because sometimes for me and my mind, if I, you know, my mind now it is, but in the beginning wasn't so familiar with what a petal shape was. So if I could give it something it knows, it made it a lot easier. So to me, this feels like a mountain range, kind of encompassing these three little flowers. So I'm going to, instead of starting from here, I'm going to bring it out from here with the point. So point, and then pressing down and bringing it over here. Now I'll just go in like so. And I am intentionally leaving some white space. Remember how important that is. And then while this is uh, wet, we'll go in again and add in these little dabs so I can get that beautiful color spread. Might even add some in here, like so. Okay, now this mostly dried, but you can still kind of go in and add some little things like that with the tip of this wonderful brush. Loving it so much. Okay, so there we go. There's your first little panty. Now when this dries, what I'll do is go in in the middle. Actually, I could even really go in while it's wet. Let's try that and see what it does. Go into your yellow. Make sure it's not too crazy wet because we don't just want a big blob. And put it in our palette here. So I'm scraping off some of that water because I don't want it to be a giant puddle. And let's just go in in the middle and see what happens here. There we go. So I kind of like that, just like that. So let's go on again, this brush, boy, it really takes a bit to rinse it. It holds so much, which is wonderful. Also the reason you need your two containers because your water, wash water is going to get um, dirty pretty quickly and then you want to be able to rinse it. Dab it, go into my yellow, kind of watery. Got a little dot here, let's just pick that up. And start with this. So actually let's go down to this one. So this one I'm going to, let's see, Let's turn it a little bit. So again, we point with the tip, start pressing down, just flipping your brush and make that first beautiful buttery leaf at the bottom. Now let's do our side ones. Point, press, like so. 
they tend to be a little bit smaller point press maybe not all the time it's just something i notice now i'm trying to also leave a little bit of white space in the middle if you noticed okay might just make that a little bit broader now i think what i'm going to do with this yellow is i'm going to go in with some purple around the edges i did see those when i went to the nursery so let's just touch in and see what that does in the middle Ooh, look at that how pretty is that wow i love it and barely touch in around the edges here look how beautiful this is the beauty the magic that is i've only found with watercolors you guys so we're going to let that dry and proceed with our last flower here so i'm washing my brush really well rinsing it tapping it off a bit and let's create our last yellow flower up here okay so creating a little bit watery, like so. And this one I think I want to be pointing up. So this one is kind of, you're coming in this way, you go here. Now this one I want to kind of go up. So point, bring it down and press. There we go, other side, leaving a little bit of white space in the middle for some interest. Point press okay that one i made kind of small which is fine because flowers aren't all the same and then oop, point press sometimes i have the hardest time painting in a way that i don't block your view okay again i'm going to go in with this purple color in the leaves while it's wet in the center because I really liked that. So let me grab a little bit of my purple paint, dab in, let it spread, go around the edges like so. Notice my edges aren't perfectly round. There we go. Now I have kind of a crazy spread right there. That's perfectly okay. Let me rinse my brush. Okay, and I'm just going to wet my brush, get all the color off, kind of dab it on my towel so it's just damp. And I'm if you saw my push and pull video, I'm gonna do that a little here because I really want to encourage this to spread out a little bit so i'm just tapping in there with a damp brush to kind of get that spread i'm going to soak up a little bit of that there we go now let's go back in here and add in that third petal i don't know why it reminds me of like a hug it's hugging those three flowers so again, we're not starting from the center because I felt like this last one was kind of tucked behind these three. So let's just go in, start from here, and kind of like little mountains or a sunrise, and then try to leave a little bit of white space and we're going to go into that now with our purple. So rinse my brush, tap it off, go into this beautiful purple we created and tap into the center and around the edges like so. There we go. So pretty, you guys. I'm just so impressed with this brush. I can't tell you. Okay. While we're waiting for that to completely dry before we add in our last one, let's go ahead and go in and just create a few of the stems. So I've got my um, sap green, olive green in the middle here for that base color. Again, I'm going to use the side of my brush to get those beautiful thin strokes. 
So let's just create our first little stem here like this. And then I think this one, I will come out here. Love, love, love the versatility of this brush. Okay, now let's go in and create a few little stems coming out. Okay, so here we go. Keeping in mind, I'm going a little bit with that S shape. Uh, let's go here. I really just kind of go where I see some space. So let's work with that already. I'm going to point my tip. Now look at how easy these little leaves are. This brush is in the shape of a leaf. So we can do it either way. We can do a leaf that shape, right? We can do a leaf that shape. Really play with it, make it yours. Do what kind of leaf you like. I kind of like my leaves ending with a little point on them. Now, what I'm gonna do is go in and I've got this other green that I mixed a little of my flower color in. So it provides again, that beautiful cohesiveness. And I'm just gonna go in and create some more leaves in here like this. Okay, when I get a minute here, I'll go in with some darker value leaves and create some interest in some lighter value leaves like this, okay? So let's go up right now. Let's leave this dry a little bit and let's just go up and create um, that third last petal of our last pansy there. So rinsing my brush, dabbing it off a bit, dipping back into my yellow. And again, we're not going to create this from pointing at the center because this last, last pansy kind of frames and I feel like it's a hug. It's putting its arms, its edges around the entire flower. Like, I've got you. How fun is that, right? So I'm gonna start here, press down, create kind of this ridge, and then remembering to leave a little bit of white space, okay? Now, while that's dry, I'm going to rinse my brush go into my purple and it's drying a little so I'm going to add a little bit more. There's my violet purple and now I'm going to add some blue to that. Which be careful with that blue. The blue can be pretty intense. And look at how much paint and water that brush holds. Look at all that. Okay so let's go into the center and just tap in and then start going in here and there with the edges, okay? Like that. All right, next let's uh, play with, now let's see, in here, you know what, while I've got purple on my brush, let's just go in and dab in some purple in the middle, okay? I chose yellow for the very middle of that one because it's a little contrast, but I think I'm gonna go with the purple in these, okay? Look how pretty that is. So let's go in and create, remember in your flowers so they don't look, your painting, so they don't look flat. I like to create darker value leaves, lighter value leaves, meaning more paint creates darker value, less paint creates a lighter value. So I'm gonna go in and create a dark value of this green, the same green I've been using. I'm just going to use more paint 
then water and make that right here. Okay, and let's add in some of that purple just to make a fun color like that. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So let's create that there. Ooh, that's pretty, I like that. So see how it has some of that purpley undertone in it? I love that because to me that really brings the whole painting together. Like so, there you go. You can, you know, do these, le these little petals in whichever direction you want. Now, I think what I might also do is create some little ones right there to really give us that S, maybe some like this. So your eye is moving. Now I'm gonna create a little different green color and I'm going to make it a very light value. That will give us that depth. So the lighter the value, it feels like it's in the back. So let's go into this, create a very light value, meaning more water. And let's just dab in a few here, okay? Like that, I'm even going to water that down a little bit more. And I wanna create some of these so they look like they're in the background. They look like they're kind of behind. If you need to take even a little bit more paint off, you can do that, see that? Oop, sorry about that. So these lighter leaves give you that depth and value. I've got dark, I've got light, I've got my S shape for my composition. Okay, I'm gonna add in maybe another little branch here, like so, okay. And get some of that paint off. So these are lighter value leaves. So they look a little bit more in the background. They look a little bit more behind. All right, let's go into that. We could even touch in a little bit with that leaf. Okay, so I think we're pretty well done here. I really loved this brush for um, these petals and things. I thought it did really, really well. <clears throat> it's such a natural, already shaped like a leaf, like a petal. It allowed me to get a lot of these um, shapes just organically and easily. And I hope it does the same for you. I, I think this is a really great brush. So I will link it and I hope you had fun with these little pansies, so many different varieties. I saw white ones. I saw these pansies with my favorite color, the Quinn Magenta in them. I did my best to try a different palette. So that's why you didn't see that today. But um, anyway, have fun with this. I encourage you to go back to my warm-ups and my drills um, before you sit down to paint. This little kit will have your swatch. It will have the original painting. I'll list all of these colors. And on the back here, I will give you some practice strokes. So. I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoy this. I think it was really fun and I'm just loving this uh, oval wash, Princeton, half inch, um, cat's tongue. I, I really am enjoying it. So thanks everybody, have fun painting and I will talk to you soon.